This video was made possible by the Corporation for YouTube Broadcasting and from monthly Patreon support by viewers like you. Thank you. And it's the Decepticons, we found them! How is this possible? We've barely left the Ark. All right, Decepticons. Wherever we just landed seems to be brimming with power. So first thing I say we do is start ransacking this planet and start collecting the natural resources. Honestly, I'm just amazed they haven't gotten far. Who knows how long they've been awake by now? Well, they won't be getting much farther. Well, now, hang on a minute, Shaggy. Optimus said find the Decepticons. He didn't say take them on. I've got Megatron dead center in my crosshairs. Right then, so if there's no more objections, we'll head south to the nearest- <laughs> Why well, hello YouTube! Greetings from the Lazy Eyebrow Reviewer to review number 109! Today we're looking at a semi-controversial figure, that being Earthrise Cliffjumper. Earthrise Cliffjumper is a legend-sized figure being sold at a deluxe class price, which needless to say has ruffled more than a few people's feathers. A lot are saying they don't like the high prices as they are, and to now get a Legends figure for that price is basically insult to injury. And to that I say, yeah, okay, I kind of understand where you're coming from. Putting price aside for a few minutes, let's look at the vehicle mode. Now, over the past several years, any time a car bot has been released, it's always been a heavily stylized, easily retooled mold. Combiner Wars were heavy offenders in this regard, but the classics showed us the Datsuns that were modernized versions of the Fair Lady, Wheeljack shared a mold of tracks to become the sort of Corvette Viper crossover, so it's really nice then, coming back to Earthrise Cliffjumper, that here we have the closest one can get to the original Porsche 944924 without provoking the wrath of our good friends over at Volkswagen. And honestly, wow. Like, we just covered Hoist and Grapple and how close they got to their original counterparts. It astounds me to see this trend continue with Cliffjumper. This is just such a beautiful alt mode, and one you rarely ever get to see with cars in this size, unless we're talking semi-expensive third-party Legends class main character figures. But then you look at the back of this car mode and just... Man, if it doesn't just make your jaw hit the floor. Like, the panel lines, unavoidable as they are, are a little distracting. Let's remove them for a second digitally. This is the car mode they gave us. I'm just speechless by how absolutely incredible it looks. It's funny, I went into this review before I filmed not overly impressed with the figure. Like, I didn't hate it. I was just sort of neutral towards it. But then I got into car mode, started taking pictures, and I just can't get over how good this alt mode looks. It's so clean. So reminiscent of the classic 944 we know Cliff Jumper to be, without resorting to the chibi style we saw MP45 go to, and that the original toy also had going for it. I don't think I can state in enough words how impressed I am with this alt mode. I could probably go on and on about this, but then I might be here for an hour and I'm sure we all have better things to do. Alright then, moving forward, if we must. This is the accessory that Cliff Jumper comes with. It's this heavy duty blaster we saw him use in the pilot episode, and wouldn't you know it, it also comes apart for vehicle mode. The rear half plugs in the back, the blasters in the side, and the stands become ski modes in the front. Like, what? In my nine years of collecting, I don't think I've ever once seen this feature included in any figure in the main line. We haven't seen surfboards, we haven't seen amphibious modes, and the only one I know of that has done it before at all is Ocular Max's version of Cliff Jumper. It's such an obscure reference. It was shown off in like 30 seconds of one episode in 1985 of season 2 for Dinobot Island. It's a one-off thing, it was never referenced again, and here it is plain as day on Earthrise Cliffjumper. I'm blown away! And of course, this being 2020 and the War for Cybertron trilogy is in full swing, it's given us a plethora of blast effects that we can now have a rocket effect in this jet ski mode as well. What the? Was that a car? Oh, oh, oh. For size comparison, Titans Return Roadburn, again illustrating my point of modern takes of classic characters, where this was a straight repaint of B with a new head. Where this is looking like a modified Chevrolet Sonic for who knows what reason, Earthrise Cliff looks like a twist on an old classic, but still remaining as close as possible to that classic. Other comparisons include 
fellow legends carbot that I quite enjoy, Wind Charger. And while we did just get this not too far back, Cliff Jumper is really making me want a new take with this level of engineering on a Wind Charger, because oh man, am I a fan of that Trans Am. Siege Sideswipe, another figure that very narrowly escapes a Volkswagen lawsuit. Siege Blue Streak, Earthrise Hoist, and finally Studio Series Optimus Prime. Not gonna lie, I really, really like the scale proportions between these two. Alright then, on to the transformation before I blather on about how much I love the 924-944 homage. So start by loosening up the paneling as everything's got a, got a bit of a tight fit. Then remove the entire rear section of the car, more on that later. Fold the wheels down, rotate the front of the car back, close them doors, separate the arms and rotate around the rear fenders, turn the torso upwards, finish moving the fenders up, spin around the torso, straighten out the arms and spin them around, open the roof, tuck away the hood, and reveal the head. More on that later too. On the rear section, fold out this handle and reapply it to the back of the figure and we're done. And here he is, Earthrise Cliff Jumper. The first dedicated Cliff Jumper I think we've ever got from Haztac that wasn't just a red bumblebee, and I for one am floored. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. Every single little detail about him. This is Cliff Jumper. He's got the big clumpy shoes, that roof belly, the back of the car hangs off the back of them, he has actual arms, he doesn't pose all wonky like he has a robotic form of Blount's disease, he poses so dynamically, his wide base, low center of gravity are very much the reasons behind that, and in short, he's amazing. Heck, we could end the video right there. Lazy Eyebrow, what do you think of Earthrise Cliff Jumper? He's amazing. <laughs> Okay, no, 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 for, for real. There is a small issue first and foremost, and it be on his belly. There is no Autobot symbol. In fact, there's no Autobot symbol really anywhere on his personage. His car mode had it, and it was on the hood for some unforeknown reason. But that gets hidden away here. No, he should actually have an Autobot symbol right smack dab on his chest. But applying this wrapper label inherits another problem. Going back to car mode, it now shows us two Autobot symbols. The hood one, which is technically in the correct orientation, and one that for geo and accuracy's sake is upside down. Mind you, for all of us older fans, this problem is nothing new. We've been dealing with it on the Seekers for 13 years, and it's been long agreed that properly oriented robot mode supersedes the orientation of vehicle mode to an extent. If it's on the roof, then upside down is A-OK. -okay. You put it the wrong way on the hood, and then, well, I gotta have a conversation with you about what looks good in vehicle mode. But we're getting sidetracked. So anyway, now we need to go removing the one off the hood. And good news, everybody. Grab some of your nearest rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip. Apply a little elbow grease and we're right as rain. And while we're going this far, let's detail the car, starting with removing the tires. Because did you know that someone in the design crew actually took the time to mold in drilled brake rotors? Let's add a touch of chrome, then black out those performance grooves, and bam. Performance disc brakes. I know I said I wouldn't come back to car mode lest I gush for an hour, but look at this! Look at this level of detail! If they had have just left this a smooth ring, I would have been happy to it was here. Chromed them out like actual rotors, mentioned it, moved on. But this, whoever designed this, they just get me. This level of detailing is what I live for in Transformers. Small details that didn't need to be there, but someone on the design team was clearly a car enthusiast and said, Nah man, I'm going to take an extra five minutes and add this to the mold. For those that don't know, these holes in the real world application are what allow the gas created from brakes when they get too hot to escape through the holes drilled into the rotors, or brake disc in Drayman's terms. This allows the brake pads to grip better at higher temperatures. Most brakes don't have this feature, they're smooth surfaces because your standard car won't be braking that hard to warrant this kind of modification to the brake system. So something like this is seen almost exclusively on performance cars. So to see it here. It caught me way off guard and took me from, wow, this is pretty great, to, oh my goodness, this is my favorite of the Wave 1 Earthrise. I mean, I don't have Optimus yet, so that may change, but in the meantime, brakes! Guys, look at the brakes! They look amazing! <sighs> I don't know, guys. This small detail really has me jazzed right now. I, I don't want to move on. I just want to talk about brakes for the next 30 minutes. Like you pop the wheels back on, they're still visible back there, but not like crazy in your face about it, but they're still back there going, I'm a performance brake, and I'm going to stop the hothead that jumps head first into battle without thinking. All right, all right, mo moving on. Other details I added include adding orange turn indicators to the fog lights, adding black markers to the hood scoops, and Cliff Jumper has two for 
some reason. Maybe the intercooler was routed to the back and that's what it's there for. I'm just spitballing here. Like, both styles can be seen in the real world, I just don't know why you'd need both. I added a bit of marker to the, under the door handle to give it some depth, like it's not just a bump on a red panel, and modified the taillights. It's a little hard to see, but we do have brakes, reverse, and turn signals. I might have to make the colors a little more noticeable in the future, as this was done with glossy ink rather than paint. Whew, alright, all that car detail has left me a bit winded, I will admit. So we're going to take a quick commercial break while I take a breather. The Transformers will return after these messages. We now return to the Transformers. Alrighty, welcome back. I think I got it out of me, so there should be no more talk about brakes for at least a minute. So let's go back into robot mode. So yes, it's like everything about the car mode is great. Everything about the robot mode is great. I still have a few little caveats with the figure, but let's talk accessories first. So as mentioned before, he does come with this massive cannon thing. And Siege being Earthrise being Moon Landing, yes, he has compatibility with the blast effects. One thing you can also do is take the other parts off to make it look a little more aesthetically pleasing. However, doing so presents a problem of storage. The skis can't go anywhere as the spots they used to go don't have enough clearance to become a permanent spot, and the foldy outy bit only goes here, which makes them look rather doofy. Almost like a limited edition Titan class juice box. Now, if one big cannon isn't your fancy, these also come apart to sport two smaller legend sized blasters that allow old Cliffy to run headfirst into a pack of Decepticons and hope the numbers don't play against him in this 1 vs 20 battle. So grievances, I have sort of two. They're really, really minor, but I guess worth mentioning. I mean, no figure's perfect. First off, the trunk. The fact it's removable. I feel like this sort of misses the point of the whole puzzle aspect of Transformers. It'd be like if the official solution for a Rubik's Cube involved a screwdriver. It isn't wrong, murmured Henry to no one in particular, but we just don't do it. No one mentioned parts forming. That being said, I'm not going to pretend like if it was on there with a pin or a mushroom peg that I wouldn't have been removing it myself for aesthetics. Because, you know, it's not like I've ever done that before to my figures, especially not a recent Voyager class Optimus Prime. Never mind about that red thing. This is how Optimus is supposed to look and has always looked. So I guess I appreciate it's removable. He can use it like a shield and stuff, so I guess that's kind of neat. So the other non-issue I have is size. In Canadian money, this guy was 12 bucks plus the 3D printed head, but I'm not counting that in the price for the point that I'm trying to make. This guy is $30. So at first glance, it does feel somewhat of a ripoff. Now, first glance is definitely the correct term, because this $12 figure has all this weird articulation in the shoulders, not allowing it to move properly, or at least not without looking janky. The $30 figure doesn't need a cheap ball joint elbow to move. It also has a waist articulation, an amazing center of balance, and this isn't me holding the figure off camera. Earthrise Cliff is holding this pose on his own. Meanwhile, if I take the Titans version any further, it'll topple. And you also get thigh and ankle rotation, not to mention the menagerie of parts he comes with and all of its playability. So for $30, we get a masterpiece quality, legend-sized cliff jumper. And it's not like we can just sit here and pretend that those of us in the MP line didn't fork up the same money for Sideswipe and Prowl that we did for Masterpiece Bumblebee, who was half the height and nearly everybody praised for it being smaller than a $20 deluxe, all because we were okay with a piece of junk we call Spike's exosuit came with the figure, and that should make up for the price, right? This justifies $120 Canadian, right? And don't even get me started on you! But for those that can't afford the higher price deluxes in general, I get it. 30 bucks Canadian is a lot to shell out five times in a row for just Wave 1's deluxes. But for those wishing they could spend 20 bucks instead for a deluxe, well, there's your comparison. For those wishing they didn't have to spend deluxe price for an amazing Beyond All Reason Legends figure. I'll only give that argument to you if you haven't considered purchasing these Legends figures, because a lot of us have. They're also $30, and they're exactly what a lot of us want in our collection for a Gears and a Huffer, and those that have them were happy to get them to complete their collection. I know some of those people are griping that Hasbro shouldn't be charging this much, and by golly, I used to be one of them, but having it in hand, it's like no comparison. Words do not do this figure justice. It's something you have to have in hand to understand. This figure is absolutely incredible. And after handling it, my response is, are you sure this is only $30? The engineering quality, the robot aesthetics, the amazing vehicle mode, breaks! Like, for real? 
This is only 30 bucks? Anyway, for some size comparisons, here he is with a bunch of Legends class figures from the past few years, some deluxe figures from the past 10 years, some of the larger figures from the past 12 months, some Voyagers from the last two years, and finally the Commander class from six months ago. So that's my review. Earthrise Cliff Jumper, despite his size and the parts forming aspect, might just be the best Earthrise figure to have come out. He looks like Cliff Jumper, he feels like Cliff Jumper, and he's not some dilapidated mess. And somehow they fit all of it into a $30 package. I'm flabbergasted. This has been the Lazy Eyebrow Reviewer. Yeah. <laughs>